Welcome back to Words of Paradise. I'm your host, Leon Idle, and we're going to do some more anime nerdy cringe. Not because anime itself is cringe or manga is cringe. Quite honestly, I'm a fan. If you hadn't noticed, if you hadn't, you know, looked around and seen all the, the anime statues and the type of shirts I wear. However, anime itself and manga is becoming cringe here in the West due to woke ideology and complete disregard for Japanese culture. Right here, we have an article from Bounding Into Comics. Veteran Aero Mangaka claims latest series rejected because publisher feared characters with animal ears would draw accusations of bestiality from the West. So, if you don't know what Aero Manga is, Aero Manga is erotic manga. Clearly manga for adults. You're going to get into a lot of, uh, you know, com usually comedic but sexual situations, things like hentai. Not really my flavor of, of manga or anime. I, I prefer the more, you know, grounded things that uh, all ages can enjoy. And that being said, I am interested in this topic because, once again, we see another culture who usually exports their wares to the West, in this case, entertainment, manga, anime, what have you, and because the story they want to tell, which they have their full right to tell, whatever creative juices flow to make you want to write a story like this, they're now saying they don't want to do it because they're afraid of Western backlash, because we cannot apparently separate fiction from reality. You write some sort of manga story, some some quirky little, you know, story for adults about, you know, cat girls or whatever that they want to have sex and maybe there's some sort of you know comedic value to it uh, but they're not going to do it because the west is going to freak out make it worse than it is it's not going to sell it's going to get canceled it's going to get them in trouble on twitter whatever if you want to write something write something but now we see people being harmed and not being able to do that let's read through here as the desire by higher-ups to reach global audiences has led to more and more infringement on the visions of Japanese anime and video game creators, the battle over universal content standards is also heating up in the world of manga. And not just in the world of manga. We're seeing this in, in video games as well. Like they said, we already heard from the directors and creators of Final Fantasy that they're looking to go outside Japan, make it for more of a global audience. And I absolutely loathe that idea. Because the global audience is absolutely ridiculous. They're the type of individuals that's going to cancel a character because their boobs are too big or because there's not enough black people in the game or whatever instead of letting artists do what they want create what they want and tell the stories they want to tell but no making things for a global audience is going to hurt Japanese media in the long run in my opinion because it's not going to be intrinsically Japanese anymore it's not going to be the thing that we want to see that we've grown up consuming and are fans of it's going to get warped in some perversion oddly enough of what Japanese culture is and was on January 12th, longtime veteran erotic mangaka Juan Goto took to Twitter to express his frustration at his latest series apparently being rejected due to the publisher's fears that the starring of a Fox Girl character was enough to have overly sensitive Western editors accusing him and his work of promoting bestiality. And this is complete bogus. We have had animalistic, anthropomorphized characters since the inception of anime. I mean, how many of you furries watching, because I know you're out there, you know, became as such because of Sonic the Hedgehog. The other 98% of us just enjoy the smooth, talking, quick-witted blue hedgehog that beats the bad guy. But there's a few of you guys that got a little weird with it. You know what? If that's your thing, that's your thing. I'm not judging. I'm judging a little bit. Point is... Cat girls, animalistic characters, you know, animals with human uh, wants, desires, can speak, have uh, bazooms. That's just been an anime thing. It's been a manga thing. It's been a Japanese culture thing. And it's not a big deal as long as you're the appropriate age and audience for that particular work. Speaking of which, for the arrow manga I'm drawing currently, when I suggested having a sex scene take place at a shrine with a god's messenger that had fox for ears and a tail, I was told, because this is an e-magazine, we're afraid we might break the rule about no bestiality, and so adding the ears and tail was rejected. Open the Arrow Mangaka, translated via Sankaku Complex, because e-magazines follow western standards. Sometimes things like this may happen. So I'm going to read the also the tweet. It was translated a little bit differently. might give us a little bit more context before I give my opinion. By the way, when I proposed the erotic manga I'm drawing right now, in which a divine messenger with a fox ears and fox tail would appear at a shrine and have sex with them, he said, Since this is an electronic magazine, there is a risk of violating bestiality prohibition rules. The tale became NG. E-books are European and American standards, so there are times when this happens. And you know what? 
I, I'm very against this sort of censorship. Now, am I personally going to get down on a manga or a book or an anime or a movie or whatever where somebody bangs an animal? No, not my style. I'll stick to my Japanese monsters and, and, and animals being, you know, absolute killers like Godzilla here. But that being said, that does not mean that someone's creativity should be stifled. They should absolutely have the freedom to put that out. And this sort of censorious methods used by the West are getting absolutely out of hand. And I'm not a fan of creativity being stifled and of artists and creators having their income probably impacted because of such restrictions. Look, there's a reason that guidelines for you know, anything exists. Movies have a rating system. Video games have a rating system. Manga has a rating system. If you want to do something that's very adult oriented, like you know, people having sex with with you know anthropomorphized animals or whatever, yeah, go for it. Just put an 18 plus tag on it, and it's up to the parents to make sure their kids don't consume that sort of media. You know, you have to sign into a website, maybe uh, verify your age, whatever. Now, are kids still going to get into that? Of course, they always find a way. But again, that's that's not the Japanese people's fault. That's not the website's fault. That falls on the parents. And that the fact that parents are so lazy and not wanting to do their job and making sure their kids don't consume media that they're too young for, that I, I don't have anything to say other than they are hurting. The censorious West, whether it be right-wing, left-wing, whatever, are hurting creators. This isn't just a, an issue with Japan. I'm sure this is an issue with any sort of creation. Even when I said there was a Neko and not Furry, he clarified, the editor was not able to immediately tell. Even if you say it's Neko, not Furry, there's no way the editor can judge it. Um, Neko traditionally means cat in Japanese. I'm not sure how that matters here because foxes, I, I don't know if they qualify as Neko, but that doesn't really matter. Oh, actually, I, th I think I did get it. So Neko probably means more human, but with animal, you know, things like an ear and tails well whereas furry is it's an actual animal okay i i think that might be what he means you would think with me being the massive anime fan i am i, I know the difference between that but like i said this, this is a little bit above my normal pay grade here returning to the topic the next day goto further explained that on the topic of kemo mimi and tails basically the publishing company will outsource the e-magazine to a company working on the online publishing industry and so the editor isn't able to immediately determine if it's okay or not Normally speaking, you'd think they're overthinking it, but as soon as there's a report from the online publishing company saying that this is bad, it's easy to get the manga taken offline, the mangaka added. Hmm, regarding the handling of Kemomi Kimoshipo in ebooks, this means the publisher entrusts it to a distributor, and the editor cannot make an immediate decision. Thinking about it normally, I think I'm thinking too much, but if the distribution company reports that this is not good, it will be a relatively easy stop to distribution. And so, so there it is. I was correct when I said earlier that this impacts, you know, the money they'll be making and being able to sell it and whatnot, and that is completely and utterly ridiculous. People who are making any sort of art should have the opportunity to sell that art. I, 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 I've said that before. And and it's up to the parents or whoever is in charge to make sure that sort of media is not consumed. You want to impact the livelihood of another individual who's telling a story, an artistic story, something from their brain, their heart, their soul, whatever, and you might not like it, you might not agree with it, that's fine. You got the freedom to just not consume it. Like I said, this isn't exactly my sort of thing, but I'm going to fight tooth and nail for his right to be able to put that out there, but the West just doesn't understand it. The West, we want to talk about, oh, cultural appropriation, that, you know, don't be racist here and there. How is it not racist? or how is it not completely demeaning of the, of the Japanese culture or, or any sort of Asian culture to say, oh, you know, what you're putting out is bad, you're not allowed to sell it. Like, way to understand your, the other culture there. You're, you're fighting so hard to make sure that there's no, you know, Islamophobia going on in America and in and, and Europe, making sure that people don't hate Muslims, which is fair. That's a good thing. You know, you don't, you don't want people hating any races or religions unnecessarily, but where's that sort of respect for the Japanese culture when it comes to their art? I guarantee you the media would take the Muslim side when it comes to, you know, someone drawing a picture of, of Muhammad and, you know, somebody getting killed because of it or whatnot. They're going to be like, well, they shouldn't have drawn a picture of Muhammad, but this guy wants to put out a manga where some anime comic book character has sex with a, another anime comic book character that happens to have, like, cat ears and a tail or something, and they're like, no, uh you can't do that, you naughty Japanese person. Like, where's where's the line? Why, why is one, you know, group of individuals get treated differently than another one? Yeah, you could say, oh, well, one has religious connotation. I think that matters even less. You know, religion is 
to me, a, a far more personal endeavor than something cultural that's just an export like manga, like anime, like any sort of, you know, Japanese entertainment medium that you can actually make money off of. You would think that they would want to make money in any facet they can, but no, they're too busy being censorious. To that end, Goto then revealed that for paper publications, the only parties involved are the publishing company and distributors like Nippon or Tohan. He added, for e-magazine, lots of companies like Fonza or Kindle are involved in the dealings, you see. Speaking of which, he briefly noted, my Aero Mangaka Tankobans, which feature a lot of Oni Shota and Incest, are pretty much all removed from Kindle. And you know what? If Kindle wants to decide that they don't want to distribute it, that's fine. They're, you know, I believe Kindle's owned by Amazon. Amazon's a private company. They can decide as a private company, we don't want this on our platform. But that's not to say that other individuals are not going to be able to sell that or won't want to sell that. So why would, why would the editors say, no, don't do this because it can get us in trouble with the West. We, we don't want to upset the West. They're the ones that buy the stuff. I wonder if just as much blame falls on the editors because they're busy fearing and kowtowing to American and European thoughts and culture and, frankly, wokeism. They were registered there once, but suddenly one day they removed it from the shelves, he sighed. It's quite tough. As soon as somebody raises their voice saying, I can't believe you're distributing something as disgusting as this, it's gone. I was registered once, but one day it suddenly stopped distribution. It's pretty tough. Someone will tell you something like, it's outrageous that you're distributing something like this, and you'll stop right away. Yeah, and, and that shouldn't be the case. I mean, obviously, art does have its limits. If you want to, you know, take a photo of a naked child and call it art, no, no, no. At that point, that's child pornography, homeboy. That needs to be shut down. These are drawings. They're, they're, they're little comic book drawings of, you know, fake characters, of, of creatures, of, of humans, whatever. Again, I might not like the art, but I don't like people being censorious and forcing that art to go the way of the dinosaur just because they don't understand it or because they're afraid of some sort of outrage mob. Meanwhile, Twitter had all the CP in the world under, you know, Jack Dorsey and them with uh, Yoel Roth, you know, possibly participating in it and refusing to take that real-life CP down. But, oh, fear the drawings! Concluding his thoughts on the matter, Goto opined, I think there's an obligation for publishers to protect freedom of speech and expression. Amen to that, brother. At least in post-war Japan. But ebook distributors don't seem to be aware of this. If a complaint comes in, they cut it off, he lamented. It's like they don't care about us. That, that's exactly what it is. They don't care about you. They're too afraid of offending Twitter. As of writing, Goto has provided no further details on either the exact content of his proposed series, nor which specific publisher voiced their above concerns. And, yeah, that's pretty much that. Look, like I said, I'm sure a lot of you watching this are going to be in the same boat I am. Eh, this is a little weird. Not up my alley. But hopefully you're also in the same boat that we should not be stifling creatives, we should not be stifling artists, and we should not be deciding, uh, acting like we as the West are the arbiter of what's good and moral and what can't be sold and what can't be sold and telling other cultures to keep your exports out of here. We don't want them. Don't even make it, you filthy, filthy Asians. Like, no, that's so, so messed up. Cultural exports from all over the world are kind of the backbone of a lot of the entertainment medium, especially considering how absolutely abhorrent modern West Western culture has been. When's the last time you watched a, a Western movie that didn't have some sort of woke ideological messaging in it? Here we could have something that, while again, I'm not personally a fan of, other people could read, watch, enjoy for what it is. Just a story. Maybe they're gonna, you know, beat off to it or something weird, and if that's, their, if that's what they want to do, they're not hurting anyone. That's their prerogative. It's a whole lot better than the stuff that was going on under Yoel Roth with Twitter. But that's just my opinion. Let me know yours in the comments below or on Twitter where you can find me at Bolt the Word. And please subscribe and check out the back catalog. I cover nerdy news of all sorts of facets. Anime, manga, Dungeons and Dragons, Star Wars, you name it. You can find it here in the Nerdosphere. But until next time, please subscribe because this has been Words of Paradise. Thank <laughs> you.